Web 3.0, a fully decentralized internet built on the blockchain. Some say it is a far-fetched fantasy or even a scam. For others, it is the foundation of a new digital age that will unlock trillions of dollars in value. I would say today, no, no one can support a billion users, no chain, no ecosystem. This industry still has 10x potential. Li Jiang, CEO at Harmony, believes that connecting all existing blockchains is the only path towards the internet of the future. You should be able to move assets very easily from one chain to another chain uh, with good prices, with good, uh, with good rates and uh, very fast. How far are we from the creation of a decentralized internet? And what would it take to onboard the first billion users on Web3? Welcome to our latest Cointelegraph interview. So I would like to start the conversation with a provocative question. Uh, one of the slogans of Harmony is uh, one chain to rule them all. That seems to be quite in contradiction with the principles of interoperability and decentralization uh, that uh, should be at the foundation of uh, the ideal of Web3. So uh, can you explain to us uh, this discrepancy? Yeah, actually, uh, I would like to first say that that's a community meme. Uh, it's, it's not a official project a slogan, but uh, because we're, we have the token Harmony One, uh, we, we actually have a lot of great uh, taglines around the word one. Um, and uh, we, we don't say this as a, as a project slogan, but we do think that we're one chain to bridge all other chains uh, to bridge, um, whether it's Ethereum, Bitcoin. Our Ethereum bridge has been launched for the last year, uh, more than a year, and that we've, uh, we have bridges to Binance Smart Chain, to Terra, to a few other projects as well. And uh, actually, our goal is to bridge all the layer one blockchains um, with us. So we're a layer one, but we think that the future is, uh, is multi-chain, right? Um, and it's cross-chain, that you'll be, you should be able to move assets very easily from one chain to another chain. Uh, with good prices, with good, uh, with good rates, and uh, very fast. So now let's get into the plans of Harmony for building Web3. So um, in a blog post that I recently read, you said that uh, uh, in 2026, uh, Harmony is planning to become a unifying Web3 platform. So can you expand a bit on this, on this thought and uh, t uh, tell us what you mean by an, a unifying uh, Web3 platform? I think looking forward for the next four years, we still think that adoption, blockchain adoption is really at 1%. If you think about you know, how many truly people are custodying their own funds, using uh, their own wallets, using blockchain every day, less than 1% of the world's population, I mean, as a whole, right? And so, and the next four years is really about continuing the journey of keep building the infrastructure, keep building the ecosystem. Uh, Web3 is just the catch-all word for you know blockchain, for decentralization, for the idea that you own your own data and you own your own money. Um, and so we want to be the platform that allows people to, allows the next billion users to come into the space, right? I, I would say today, no, no one can support a billion users, no chain, no ecosystem, uh, but the, it requires innovation on the technology level. It requires bridging to other chains that uh, we can keep making this uh, infrastructure layer uh, easy for whether it's NFT, games, DAOs to join in, DeFi, uh, all, all of the above that you've been hearing about, which, which we just call the metaverse, uh, all of that uh, together. So that, that's the vision. The unifying Web3 platform is uh, a platform that allows the next billion users to come into Web3. So I guess that one of the main challenges facing blockchain technology nowadays is the so-called uh, blockchain trilemma. So the trilemma of uh, scalability, um, decentralization and security. So each protocol comes up with its own solution for this uh, problem. What is uh, Harmony's solution for the blockchain trilemma? Yes, so uh, good, great question. And that's, uh, that's actually a key point because everyone has to choose certain uh, design and trade-offs. So what, what we've chosen is uh, sharding and proof of stake. So these are, these are not new ideas, by the way. These are uh, ideas that have been around the Ethereum 2.0 design and uh, community ever since, I would say, 2015, 2016, right? So um, what, what we've done is put those, the best research into production and actually launched uh, the first sharded and proof of stake, one of the first sharded proof of stake mainnets back in 2019. And um, 
it, it actually you know works really well because of those reasons and uh, we'll continue to make it better. So on our roadmap is you know things like cross star transactions, even cross star smart contract. So I would say that we're uh, pr probably just you know even there's still a lot long story about sharding uh, and proof of stake that we can continue to make it better. Uh, and continue to allow the protocol to scale. So that's interesting because it's widely known that the, in the trilemma uh, basically forces uh, uh, protocols to uh, sort of sacrifice one of these three components. So either uh, security or decentralization or scalability for the sake of the other two. But in your opinion, you can preserve all the three at the same uh, high level and, and just expand the triangle. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. We we expand the the relationship still exists between the three components, right? Like they're they're all moving in relation, but you can open, you can expand the overall um as well. Like for example, you know, we have two second finality. Uh while that's 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 almost the fastest in the industry, but uh we did that without you know trading off on decentralization or security. And so there are ways you can get even faster, you know. By by you know sacrificing some of the other factors, so you could be sub one second uh, if you choose to be more centralized. I mean that's what that's what like let's say AWS is, right? So um, so our our goal has actually been pushing on all three at the same time through engineering and expanding all of it uh, at the same time. So now I would like to touch upon one of the core aspects of um, Harmony strategy for Web3, which is based on DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. So you uh, dedicated $50 million out of a total $300 million fund for funding a number of DAOs. So can you tell us why DAOs play such a crucial role in Harmony strategy for Web3 and um, what kind of DAOs uh, uh, are you funding at the moment? So, so essentially, we think DAOs will replace companies and uh, in the future countries. It's a way of organizing all human coordination and activity. Um, so, I think you know, like think about countries and uh, and companies. These are all entities that we humans invented, designed in the first place, right? Like, why do we have LLCs or you know corporations and there was the East Dutch, uh, in India, India company. Like there are all these things that uh, we basically made up, <laughs> to be honest. And even countries, right? We made it up. Like someone won a war, and it, it became a country. And so um, I think with Web three, with the technology, uh, with coordination um, that everyone can participate, and there's a natural token incentive, you can design any way of coordinating humanity, and that's that's the future, right? Um, and and so. Uh, people won't be starting companies anymore. People will start DAOs, uh, and and so that's why we think that uh, almost everything can be done and created via a DAO um, at, at some level. Uh, and it'll be uh, as we as the world becomes even more global, it's a much better tool than than an LLC or a corporation because those can't go across borders. It's very difficult. Uh, but DAOs is global. DAOs are everywhere. DAOs can provide incentives as soon as you join a DAO. Uh, it, it's just a much more flexible uh, way of uh, getting anything done. Okay, so that's interesting. So can you give us some concrete examples of what DAOs are you involved in and uh, basically what role they play in the uh, Harmonies ecosystem? Sure. Uh, we have uh, some core DAOs that are our community DAO or our validator DAO. Uh, community DAO is just about growing the community. So what's nice about that is Instead of us trying to hire ten more people on our team to try to you know coordinate and grow community and do social media, like we have DAOs that do all this uh, work, and you know it's it's much easier. Like there's no management overhead, there's no uh, like coordination with the sub team. I mean, they're an independent organization that you know delivers on their milestones, and they can be anywhere in the world. Uh, it doesn't matter where they live, right? So we don't have to like get. You know, we don't have to right now. If you have a company and you want to hire someone in another country, you have to set up an entity in that country, you have to set up a bank account in that country, then you have to send money to the you know your entity in that country and then and then pay that person. So blockchain changes all of that, right? You just anybody can raise their hand and start. Uh the DAO can be set up in one day, essentially. It's a multi-sig with you know nine people that that uh consent to being there, and, and then they, they can start doing the work.
So that's how flexible it can be, right? So another DAO that we, we started with a, a good collaborator is the Harmony Africa DAO. Um, and their, their goal is to uh, you know, cultivate and educate developers in Africa uh, across different countries. There's five countries that they're targeting. If we tried to do that as our own team, that would have taken six months to a year to start, right? Again, like all the entities, all the countries, all the local people, but as a DAO, it took a few weeks to get, you know, everybody organized and then, and then we started. So that's, that's the power. So now I would like to go deeper into your vision of uh, Web3 and in particular, uh, your vision of the interaction between layer one and layer two protocols. So of course, uh, Harmony is a layer one solution alternative to Ethereum. And you think that um, basically the capability of Harmony to create this bridge to Ethereum and other blockchain makes Harmony a more attractive solution than layer two protocols. That seems to be in contradiction with what um, uh, analysts at Coinbase uh, say. Uh, so they believe that Ethereum will remain uh, the uh, dominant layer one and that uh, the culmination of uh, layer two scaling solutions combined with upgrades like the beacon chain, uh, the beacon chain merge and sharding could limit progress for alternative layer ones in their current form. So what do you think about this uh, argument? Um, the reason why we think we're we layer one at, like us a harmony with a bridge to Ethereum is actually better because the, our bridge is much faster. Uh, you know, you can transfer assets in two or three minutes versus layer two. There's a, there's a seven day settlement time for our optimistic layer two rollups. So there there's a lot of different um, features that like essentially you can use us as a scaling solution um, and transfer assets in the same way they use layer two, but the experience is better. Uh, so, so there's not, I, I have nothing against layer two. I just think the design is having an, a parallel layer one that's connected um, because we can also connect to Bitcoin and Cosmos and other layer ones, right? It, it, it's just more flexible versus just being a layer two. You can, you're actually only in that layer two. You can't even connect to other layer twos. I mean, it's hard. You have to go back to Ethereum and then go to the, a different layer two. So, so that's the reason why I think that layer one is a better design as a bridge um, and actually, we want Ethereum to grow, right? So if, th if Ethereum grows 10 times bigger, uh, hopefully we can get 10 times bigger along with it, along with the entire industry. So there's really no conflict um, as long as we are in the right uh, industry and as long as this industry still has 10x potential, which I think it does. Uh, hopefully in the next, you know, think about the market cap of all of crypto is about 2 trillion. Like it, it should be, it should, could easily be 20 trillion in a few years. Yeah, it seems that the trend is going in that direction. So now I would like just to clarify, it's clear your position towards Ethereum, but what about your uh, view on the competition among the different uh, layer one uh, solutions that are competing with each other? Like, for example, I was uh, talking to the founder of Nier, another layer one protocol alternative to Ethereum, who seem to have a very similar vision uh, to yours in terms of how he sees the development of Web3 and uh, specifically how he sees his own protocol, uh, he, the, role he, the role his protocol uh, will play in this Web3. So this bridge connecting uh, all different blockchains. So I was wondering, what do you think? Uh, why, why would we in the future need multiple layer ones, why would we need uh, a multitude of these bridges? Uh, couldn't we just have one bridge that works very well? I would say that the, these ecosystems can all grow. And in fact, um, bridging to near is something that we, we, we will do. It's just a matter of time, right? Whether they do it or we, we do it or someone, uh, a new project does it, uh, it, it will be bridged. And um, I think that we will live in that multi-chain world where there will be a few, there'll be a few chains that will keep growing, keep growing. And there'll be some others that are, you know, slightly smaller, but still relevant. Like it, it's a very fluid landscape. It's not like, oh, there's, there can be only, and, and it's not, and it's not um, zero sum. It's not like, oh, this one chain has all this. And then this other chain doesn't like, there will be, there are, if you see applications, right. They live on multiple chains now, like Sushi, uh, Curve is on many, a number of different chains. And that's how that's how it'll be instead of uh, and then there'll be native projects on every chain. So I think what's going to happen is each the blockchains that will um, that will grow are the ones that are great at cultivating their native projects. Um, so for us, it's like, let's say DeFi kingdoms or 
Tranquil, these are some great projects on Harmony that have you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in value and traction. So now let's talk about your visions for 2022. So we saw that Harmony experienced a massive growth in 2021 together with other layer one protocols uh, because of on the wave of this, uh, of this um, bull market that we, that we witnessed last year. So this year, the picture is a little bit uh, less optimistic. We saw a huge drop in crypto prices not long ago. So what do you think? Ha can Harmony uh, continue to grow at the same pace uh, even in a bear market? I think um, that's a good question. I, I hope so. Uh, so I think obviously like bull market, everyone gets excited. And uh, inevitably, this, this happened last time too. In 2017, like the... Uh, ICO cycle on Ethereum, it brought in a lot of people and and then some percentage, let's say at that time, probably only 20% of people stayed, right? Because the bear market was really long and crypto winter was really long. Um, I think now like the cycles are shorter, like you go up and you go down, you go up, you go down, like it's it's more compressed. Um, so the my only prediction, like, of course, I have lots of theories about 2022 and let's say more DAOs, more tools, more builders, but my but my only thing that I think is actually more talent will come into Web3 this year, like the best talent, like we see it everywhere. Um, honestly, I get pinged every day by people who say, how I want to, I want a career in this space. I want to build something. I, I'm doing a new project. Like we have so many friends who just, who are just coming in, like flooding in. As a final question, I would like to know, uh, what should we expect from this talent that is coming into the space in 2022? What are the milestones that uh, we should look forward to happen in terms of uh, the development of Web3 uh, this year? Yeah, I think in general, my big, my personally uh, biggest hope is uh, that Web3 make the user interface a lot easier for the average user so that we can onboard like the next 100 million people, right? So that means that wallets, it should be better, like all the tools. I mean, today, if you want to swap tokens, uh, it's not necessarily that easy, right? You need to know how Uniswap or Sushi works or, and, and where the tokens go and how long it takes this uh, transaction. You have to wait. Like all these should just be so abstracted that you can just buy some tokens on your wallet, on your phone, and then you can swap and you can trade. Like all of that is in the background. So, uh, so I hope like as an industry, we make the experience easier for like, your mom or my parents, you know, whoever, right? Like you're like the non-crypto people. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Lee. That was a great conversation. Thanks for coming on our show. Yeah, thank you very much. Had a great time.